live from the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Splunk.com 2015. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Rick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for Splunk.com 2015. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the sins from the noise from siliconangle.com, moogiebond.com. Go to siliconangle.tv to check out all the videos. And we're here live, and I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angel, my co-host Jeff Frick, GM of theCUBE. Our next guest is Myron Davis from AP, apvalaska.gov project you're working on. Welcome to theCUBE. Um, I handle uh, Splunk as well as uh, Puppet and other and intrusion detection and uh, ID reverse and engineering of, of malware and basically and phone records. Yeah. Um, that yeah. You're that the forensics. hammer. <laughs> he's the, he's the guy the, that splunks so. things, right? You're the splunker, but you're the, also the hammer. You got to watch things, make sure they, from a security standpoint everything's provisioned, everything's running well, operationally. Most everything is that we have outsourced a lot of stuff, but. Um, when stuff comes down to it, I have to be the, someone's got to say whether or not it's to move on or not. So, I'm talk, one about, of those talk guys. about the project and where Splunk fits in. Well, Sp Splunk, uh, which project? No, the infrastructure, Splunk, the, ops, yeah. the ops that you're running. Because Splunk, uh, Splunk actually is, a, is applied to a, several different um, target stuff we're doing, not just security, but it's doing our, our uh, phone record requ requests for all of our phone records. We got about 200, let's see. I think we're at 100 to 200 million maybe phone records, as well as it does all of our IDS systems. So we have multiple IDS and firewall systems and we, we uh, run it all into the SIM model. So everything is managed into, into Splunk Enterprise Security. And uh, so that no matter what device it is, it all shows up, shows up in a, the same. So talk about the flexibility of this tool, because you're like the classic case where, you know, you, br you brought in Splunk, and, but you just see opportunities to, to really kind of point it at all different types of problems. You know, how does that kind of work? You know, do you see any kind of limits, or do you just see all kinds of things you can quote unquote Splunk, which is what we hear always in the halls walking up and down. We want to Splunk that. Well, the way that we, uh, we deployed it is we have a system which we wanted other people to have access to. So we have all the IDS logs and firewall logs and a bunch of other data. And instead of us being primary ownership, we're actually, you have 15 different organizations, sub-agencies below us, which need access to the data. But we need to find out, but they have access to the same, we're running a shared infrastructure, so there's the same firewall for all of them and everything. So we needed a way to, to spread it out so they can get just what they need and what they want to see, and that's what Splunk is doing for us right now. Talk about the performance um, issues. And we heard 6.3, showed some great numbers. Got a, basically a big round of applause during the keynote yesterday. What are you seeing for performance? How's the speed, good? So we're not running 6.3 yet. But the speed is, uh, is pretty quick. And the way, that, the way that we solved it was throwing hardware at it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we, uh, we're throwing, uh, we have uh, four different search heads, of which they're about, about 100 gigs of RAM each, and, uh, and with uh, 40 cores each. And that seems to do the job. Yeah. Oh, when, it, when in doubt, throw hardware at it. I love that. Because <laughs> yeah, that's what, and look at Facebook. We were at, we were at the Facebook conference uh, two weeks ago, and all the underlying stuff is still the same. Server, storage. It really hasn't been a lot of, they're throwing hardware at it. Now, now granted, they make their own, so they're Facebook. Um, but that brings the next question up, is that in a DevOps kind of environment, you mentioned Puppet and provisioning. Oh yeah. What are you guys doing in the DevOps side, and how does that help you guys uh, from an ops standpoint? How is the DevOps working? Well, we're running um, Puppet to manage all of our boxes, and that's a, a lot of different machines, and that saves a, a mass amount of time, because you can, do, you can ensure the same configuration, the same rule sets, and if somebody changes things where they're not supposed to do, Puppet overwrites it. So you got to do it through the Puppet Control Center. And as, now I've also deployed, I've got deploy of, Splunk actually is deployed by Puppet as well. And I've got, uh, I've got classes set up for Splunk 
So whenever a new box comes in, you just add it in that regular expression. So if, it's, if, it, if the host name matches the re Splunk regular expression, it gets, um, gets put as an indexer or a search head or, or, or whatever and the configuration just gets dumped right onto it. What about the um, security aspect? What are you seeing for attacks? I mean, everyone we talk to is always, you know, start out back in the old days doing some port scans. Now you got all kinds of spoofing of malware. You got phishing attacks. You got DDoS. What, what I find interesting is I, I've seen in the last six months is more of a target towards the actual person itself. So what? So, so social someone, gamification. Someone's gonna. We've had we've had these people. Or people call up, and they're either a job interview or a. Or, they're, or they pretend to be somebody that the person already has relationships with, and then they're using that as a as a as a connection in, and that's and that's kind of that's pretty scary because what are they looking for? Passwords? I'm, Just access? You know, the malware they have actually been installing has been Crypto Wall, and that's really nasty if you ever run across that. No, we have not. What's it like? Well, Crypto Wall runs and it. It encrypts all the local machine hardware, and then it decides to crawl over the network and encrypt everything on the network. And then once that happens, it throws up a uh, a, a little dialog box saying, "Hey, you want your data? You're going to pay some Bitcoin." That's ransomware. We heard yeah. that earlier. We had, we had a guest and, on earlier today saying, "And the this return, is a huge problem." So what I think is what's happening is they realize the return on some of these people are worth the effort for actually doing a little social engineering to get their malware on the system. Because there's certain organizations which will pay, will pay. And it's a large, if you look at some of the news articles, you'll see that people are paying some money, a significant amount, for to get their data back. So how do you, that, that's just best practices, that's just training, I mean, it's not much technology. That's, or is there? Well, it's, it's hard for one, because how do you train an organization when people live in a small town of, you know, of 100 people, how do you train the people at that level in order that not to trust people? Because generally people are trustworthy. Yeah. You know, they trust people. It's come, you're calling up on the phone, I kind of trust you a little bit. You're going to send me an interview, you're going to send me a resume for a job you're applying locally here? Okay, I'll read that resume. And oh, so, so then the next comment says, oh, it's being stopped by your spam system. Well, how about you just send it to my personal Gmail account? And so then it goes to the Gmail account and then it's SSL, then it goes right past all the security software and gets in. That's the hacking, that's the culture. I mean, all kinds of weird malware, the spoofing. How about any DDoS attacks? We haven't had, we, the only ones that we've seen as far as, is people attempting to use us as relays sometimes. And we had, a, uh, we had one instance a while back where, if you're familiar with um, DNSSEC, Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, DNSSEC has some flaws where it decides to send large packets over UDP, which is, which is pretty much, an, I don't know why the government decided to go with that, because it's a pretty bad idea. Because if you can do a small request for a DNS packet and get a large response, and you don't have to authenticate the, the sender, well, every, every person who tries to secure their system ends up being yet one more vector for bringing down another person's network. So, huh. sorry. So, Good. As you say, so you're given a you're given a talk later uh, today, right? So uh, t tomorrow. Tomorrow. So for the folks that that uh, aren't here, give a little plug. What are you going to be talking about? Why should they come and attend if they're here? And then for the people that aren't going to make it, um, give a little overview what you're going to cover. So my talk is basically about applying regular expressions to ACLs. So in Splunk, you don't have the controls to do complex regular expressions on access control lists. And if you did, it would be, it uses a lot of CPU power. So my, t my uh, talk is about how to pre-munch your data so that it's ready for search filters in, in Splunk by using complex regular, regular expressions. So we run about 400 different regular expressions, but there's a way if you organize your regular expressions right and you're smart about it, you can effectively share equipment amongst agencies. So what's the vibe of the show? Share with the folks out there what your take of the show is. For the folks who aren't here watching, what's it like here? It's a, it's a lot of nerds 
<laughs> walking around <laughs> with plug shirts. <laughs> the one thing I've noticed. <laughs> and, uh, and people you can talk to uh, as far as like the lunch and, uh, or, or the uh, breakfast. You just sit down and talk to people and everyone you talk to is pretty much interested in the same thing you're interested in, which is pretty, pretty neat. It's, and the conversations are, are, are broad. You can Very be talking broad. about Alaska.gov to some other thing over here, completely different the, industries. A banking guy next to me and then there's somebody else on the other side and it's interesting enough, there's a lot of commonalities behind, between industries as far as software people are running. Myron, thanks for taking the time to come by theCUBE, really appreciate it. Thanks for sharing the data with us. Um, we really appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of the show. And then thanks for, uh, for taking the time. This is theCUBE, we'll be back with more live coverage after this short break.